Hi there! When you think of diabetes symptoms, what comes to mind? I bet you remember three. Excessive thirst, frequent urination, and unexplained weight loss. And you're right! These three symptoms of diabetes have been described since ancient Egypt, around 1500 BC. In this video, I will go over the 10 main symptoms of diabetes. And the earlier we detect that someone has diabetes or pre-diabetes, the better. Because when we catch it early, we can prevent complications. And if you are pre-diabetic, we can even stop it from turning into diabetes. And I'll tell you how at the end of the video. So stick around until the end. But first, go ahead and like this video. Let's make this one the most liked video on the channel. Can we hit 30,000 likes and beat our previous record of 29,000? Let's see if we can do it together. And please share this video with your friends and family. Diabetes is incredibly common in the United States alone. There are approximately 98 million pre-diabetics and 38 million diabetics. And here's the scariest part. One in every four pre-diabetics will become diabetic within five years. That's why this topic is so important. So share it wide. Tell me in the comments, do you have diabetes or pre-diabetes? And where in the US or the world are you from? Let me know below. All right, let's dive in. About 38 million Americans are diabetic. Roughly 1.5 million with type 1 and 36.5 million with type 2. To clarify, type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease. The body's immune system destroys the beta cells in the island of Langerhans in the pancreas, the very cells that produce insulin. Eventually, the pancreas can't make insulin anymore. It can happen at any age, but it's most common in children and teenagers, especially between 10 and 14 years old. Type 2 diabetes, which is much more common, is defined by insulin resistance, meaning the body's tissues become less sensitive to insulin. Your cells simply stop listening to insulin. Unlike the type 1, the pancreas does produce insulin, sometimes even more than normal, but it's not enough to prevent high blood sugar. In the past, we used to see type 2 diabetes mostly in older adults. But today, because of widespread obesity, we are seeing it more and more in children and adolescents. That's why I always emphasize obesity, especially belly fat, is the number one environmental factor behind insulin resistance, prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. We're talking about abdominal visceral fat, not the fat under your skin. That's why we talk about apple-shaped versus pear-shaped body types. The apple-shaped fat concentrated around the abdomen, neck and arms is more harmful. The pear-shaped fat stored in the hips and thighs tends to be less dangerous. Here's something fascinating. Exercise changes where fat is stored. Take Japanese sumo wrestler, for example. They eat around 7,000 calories a day, yet they rarely have diabetes or high triglycerides because their intense physical activity prevents insulin resistance even though they are technically obese. Now, does genetics influence diabetes? Yes, especially type 2 diabetes. Studies with identical twins show that if one twin develops type 2 diabetes after age 40, the other has a 70% chance of becoming diabetic within a year. 
now are there differences between the symptoms of type 1 and type 2 diabetes? Partially. In type 1 diabetes, the body produces little or no insulin, leading to much higher blood sugar and more severe symptoms. It's easier to spot. Usually, in kids, they start eating more, but keep losing weight fast. They may start wet in the bed again, or even have accidents during class, which can be very embarrassing. They become more irritable, angry, emotional, they are thirsty all the time, and their vision gets blurry. A key point, type 1 diabetes can cause diabetic ketoacidosis, a dangerous, life-threatening condition. It often appears under stress, infections, emotional strain, exams, etc. The symptoms of ketoacidosis include severe abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, extreme weakness, shortness of breath, and fast breathing as the body tries to get rid of acid. Also confusion and a fruity or rotten apple smell in the breath. If you notice these symptoms, go to the ER immediately. You'll likely find high blood sugar and ketones in the urine, hence ketoacidosis. Now, if that's not you, let's talk about type 2 diabetes symptoms to watch for. Symptom number one, dark patches on the skin. They appear in the folds of the neck, armpits or groin and feel soft or velvety. You notice the skin is dark, scrub it, apply creams and nothing helps. It's not dirt, it's called acanthosis nigricans. It happens because your body is overproducing insulin causing skin cells to multiply faster. In people with darker skin, those new cells have more melanin, leading to dark patches. So take a look at your neck. Acanthosis nigricans is a strong warning sign for future diabetes. Symptom number two, gum disease, periodontitis. Periodontitis is a chronic inflammatory disease that destroys the tissue supporting your teeth. It causes swelling, bleeding gums, receding gums, loose teeth, and even tooth loss. Diabetes triples your risk of developing it. And it's serious. Diabetics with severe periodontitis have three times higher risk of dying from heart or kidney disease than those without. So, if you are diabetic or pre-diabetic, take good care of your teeth and gums. Everything in your body is connected. Symptom number three, itching and fungal infections. Excess sugar in the blood and urine feeds fungi, causing Infections, especially in warm, moist areas like the mouth, genitals, armpits, and groin. These areas may itch, burn, redden, and hurt. Some fungal infections, like candidiasis, can become serious if not treated. And if you are getting recurrent urinary tract infections, that's another red flag. Diabetes increases that risk too. Symptom number four, blurred vision. If you used to see clearly, but now everything looks blurry, it could be diabetes. High blood sugar increases sugar levels inside the eye, pulling in water, which causes the lens to swell and change shape, blurring your vision. Diabetes is the number one cause of blindness in adults worldwide due to diabetic retinopathy, which damages the small blood vessels in the retina. Symptom number five, burning feet. Diabetes 
and pre-diabetes are the leading causes of burning sensations in the feet due to diabetic neuropathy, nerve damage. It affects up to half of diabetics. That's around 19 million people in the United States alone. When nerves are damaged, other organs suffer too. Your eyes, kidneys, and heart. Some people feel mild tingling, but others experience severe pain or disability. Symptom number six, fatigue. According to the American Diabetes Association, ADA, 61% of people newly diagnosed with type 2 diabetes report fatigue, the second most common symptom. Why? because your cells aren't getting enough glucose, their main source of energy. Fatigue can also be caused by stress from the diagnosis, waking up at night to urinate, excess weight, or sleep apnea. Even medications like metformin can cause vitamin B12 deficiency, leading to tiredness. Symptom number seven excessive hunger. Diabetes can make you feel constantly hungry, especially for sweet foods. This isn't emotional eating, it's diabetic hyperphagia, where your cells aren't getting enough sugar even though your blood is full of it. Symptom number eight, excessive thirst. When your body can't process sugar properly, your kidneys try to eliminate it through urine, and sugar pulls water along with it. You lose fluids, get dehydrated, and feel an intense thirst that just doesn't go away. Symptom number nine, unexplained weight loss. This is more common in type 1 diabetes without enough insulin. Your cells can't absorb glucose for energy, so the body burns fat and muscle, leading to weight loss. And if you are losing sugar through urine, glycosuria, you lose even more weight. Symptom number 10, frequent urination one of the earliest signs of diabetes. When there's too much sugar in your blood, your kidneys have to work overtime to filter it, creating more urine, especially at night. This dehydration triggers thirst, which leads to more drinking and cycle repeats. How can you confirm if you have diabetes? With a blood test. The normal fasting glucose is below 99 milligrams per deciliter. Pre-diabetes is 100 to 125. Diabetes is 126 milligrams per deciliter or higher. There's also the oral glucose tolerance test, OGTT. After drinking a sugar solution, the normal is below 140 after two hours. Pre-diabetes is 140 to 199 and diabetes is 200 milligrams per deciliter or higher. And the HbA1c test, the 10-week average of your blood sugar, the normal, is below 5.7 percent. Pre-diabetes is 5.72, 6.4 percent diabetes is 6.5% or higher. Of course, one test alone doesn't confirm it. Results should be repeated to be sure. So, you find out you are pre-diabetic, right on the edge. Now what? How do we prevent pre-diabetes from turning into diabetes? That question was answered by the Diabetes Prevention Program. DPP study. Researchers followed over 3,000 pre-diabetic participants, divided into three groups. 
The first group, lifestyle changes. They should lose 7% of body weight, eat fewer calories and exercise 150 minutes a week. The second group, metformin group alone. 850 milligrams twice a day or placebo group, just a sugar pill. And the results? The lifestyle group reduced their risk of developing diabetes by 58% and the metformin group alone by 31% compared to the placebo within just three years. So yes, it's absolutely possible to prevent diabetes and even reverse it in some cases through weight loss and lifestyle changes. Did you enjoy this video? Do you understand diabetes and its symptoms better now? I hope so. Here are my next two recommendations. The 10 best fruits for diabetics and the five you should avoid and this pill causes dementia. I'm Dr. Andre Wambier, I'm a cardiologist, and this is Dr. Dre Health Tips. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.